Like a moth to a flame is one of those older well-known metaphors in English language and its meaning is clear. Insects like moths are attracted to flames and sources of light extremely strongly as if they do not have control over it. We know that many other insects also get attracted to light and artificial light especially and we see this all the time and we even use it for insect control. But why does this happen? Why do insects get drawn to sources of light even though they don't fly upwards towards the sky when there's no other artificial source of light? We've known since Roman times, which is when this was first documented, that insects are attracted to artificial light and flames. Previous research in the subject seems to suggest that insects could look at artificial light like some sort of guiding mechanism or an escape route or a source of just blinding. But none of these fully really explain insect behavior around sources of artificial light. A new study from scientists in the UK and US now at least tries to explain how and why insects behave the way they do around light, even though we do not know exactly why they can't avoid it. The research team in this study wanted to understand how artificial light sources physically affect the insect's flight, causing them to fly towards the light. To understand this, they studied the flight path of a large number of insects, hundreds of insects, under a variety of light sources in the laboratory setting and also understanding their natural flight path in the wild. They used regular light and UV lights, including diffusing lights and having them as point sources. What was different in this study is that there has so far only been observations of behavior, not really flight data, but this study changed that. This team set up cameras to observe insect flight paths in 3D using motion capture and stereo videography technology. Using this, they reconstructed the 3D kinematics or mechanism of flight and flight dynamics of insects around sources of artificial light. We are already familiar with some basics. Any living being that flies has to have a sense of orientation to know what is up, what is down, where gravity is coming from, where the sky is and how to move laterally and vertically. For the longest time, in terms of evolution, the brightest source of light for animals and insects has been the sky. During the day, it's the sun and during the night, it's the moon and the stars. So the sky has always been the brightest source of light when insects have flown and the sky has been above the insect throughout evolutionary history until humans started to work with fire. So insects develop something called dorsal light response. This is a physiological phenomenon that insects exhibit naturally where they ensure that their back is turned towards the source of light, towards the sky. This is called dorsal light response and it is documented in insects. Insects are also not as sophisticated a flyer as birds are. Most of them rely on flight mechanics to stay stable in flight while many of them struggle to perform sudden maneuvers to adjust their flight path and direction and speed. For all of this, insects use sensory cues, both visual as well as mechanosensory aspects of their own bodies. To understand and capture all of these aspects and intricate motions of these insects, the scientists studied 10 orders of insects and observed and recorded their flight paths using point sources of light, diffused light and changing the orientation and location of these sources of lights. So what did they find? The first thing they found using 477 recordings was what they characterized as abnormal behavior of insects. These are three different obvious behaviors. One is the insects when exposed to a source of light started orbiting it with sustained speed. The second is they also started stalling when they started climbing high up facing away from the light source till they could no longer fly up. And the third behavior they observed was inversion of flight, resulting in an insect diving towards the ground. These are characterized as abnormal behaviors because they are not observed under natural source of light without any artificial light or in the darkness. If the lights were placed upwards above the insects, the insects flew below the light and were able to 
write themselves and fly stably, but not so much when there are artificial sources of light spread across the room. What the scientists observed is that all insects tilt their dorsal side, which is their back, towards the light at all times, even if this prevented their ability to fly and led them to crash on the ground. The team collected a total of 477 videos to understand and map how insects fly in the presence of artificial light and totally studied the flight trajectories of 538 individual insects. Ultimately, the team was able to conclude that the main reason insects are attracted to artificial light is the dorsal light response. This response can even disorient them to such a degree that they're no longer able to fly and they just dive down and crash to their death. But this physiological response is so strongly programmed in evolutionarily that it is not under the insect's control. What they do is they ultimately try to fly by orienting their back towards the brightest source of light in the vicinity. The problem of erratic insect flight path is immediately fixed once the artificial light sources are removed or they are moved to the ceiling. When artificial light is above the insects, their flight path has no problem. This simulates exactly what the night sky or the day sky would look like and the insect flight path goes back to normal. So artificial light causes erratic flying behavior because the insects are continually adjusting and correcting their flight path to make their own backs face the source of light. This then leads to vertigo, thus seeing what we think is an attraction towards artificial light while in fact the insects are losing their sense of stability and flight. Now this makes us understand what is happening but this doesn't fully explain all insect behavior. What we understand now is only what happens when insects fly very close to an artificial source of light. What about a really bright source of light at a distance? We don't know yet and more studies are needed about sources of artificial lights that are at a distance from insects. But we do know one thing now and this study makes it even more clear. We know that insects are rapidly declining in population and this will have effects on the ecosystem, the food chain, on pollination, food security and much more. While scientists continue to understand insect behavior in a larger context, especially in terms of food security and sustainability, what we now know is that we can improve insect habitats by reducing unnecessary artificial light at night. And this continues to be the takeaway of most insect studies that come out these days.